Hi, good morning. So it's story time. A few months ago in the thick of um, winter, I think it's when winter just started, um, my eldest, almost six, um, visited Gogo's friend. And at Gogo's friend, there was a pit bull. And when she got there, the pit bull got a little too excited and it pounced on Timo in a way that she felt was very aggressive. Um, and the dog grabbed her jacket um, and she was scared and that has remained a trauma for her i um, in a very significant way like right now she is dead scared of dogs puppies regardless of how small regardless of how cute if she just sees a dog or knows that the place has a dog she gets triggered immediately and I hadn't realized the extent of this until the other day when we went to our big park and she was a little uneasy. She was like, are there dogs? Are there not? I'm like, I'm, I'm there. I'll be there. You'll be okay. But even me being there was not enough because when she spotted a dog, it was a little big, it looks cute and, you know, I could play with you type vibe. But for her, it was, uh, hell no. She went up one of the really tall slides and she sat there at the top and she could not come down she refused to come down she immediately wanted me to help her get down we had to go to the car we had to leave the park immediately and yesterday she had the same situation again and i wasn't around she was with daddy and four puppies came to her four small cute puppies came towards her and she was dead scared and for the rest of the day she really did not have um, a great time because she got proper triggered a trauma got triggered and daddy told me this when i was at work i wasn't with her yesterday he told me that and already i was worried because the last time she got triggered when she went up the slide she came back home and she was just acting out of character she was like proper mean girl vibes like like to an extent intolerable because i'm like why are you being so mean why are you being so harsh but i knew that i wasn't asking her that i could see and i was just trying to curb with some kindness and some patience but but because i was coming from a place of empathy of understanding that oh you know what that brain must be going through a lot i ushered with as much love patience and kindness as i possibly can um and yesterday was the same thing i wasn't there so immediately when i came back she was bathing with her sister and i gave tried giving them you know some love some attention i'm here immediately when i gave the smaller one attention she melted immediately she started just crying and she just oh she just let it all go and she just started crying and she just started being whiny and nothing works like she was proper having a tantrum you know she was like meltdown i haven't seen a meltdown like that in a while and we played around it i was like okay maybe some laughs we 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 we, we, caught, we got in we got in with some you know some understanding i'm here you okay um while she was crying and then was like okay let's play through it and we laughed through it but even then she was still not regulated she was completely dysregulated for most of the night and the amount of patience i had to put on because the Food, the plate we used for her food was not good enough. The amount of food on her plate was not good enough. I want you to feed me. I want. Oh, it was a complete intolerable mess. But I had to come from a place of patience and empathy to say, oh, it's a. It's, I, I could understand that it's a lot right now. And a part of me was prepared. A part of me, because we had the incidents when daddy texted me and told me that a dog a dog situation and she was and he was like she's in the house she doesn't want to go outside i was like ah okay okay it's yeah she's proper triggered and i don't know the vocabulary with the with the brain signs and maybe i should maybe i should know the vocabulary of the brains of the, the brain signs and the brain terminology to use but her brain was completely triggered and she was operating from a place of fear because four of the things that she does not like right now because they remind her of a moment where she was she was so scared during the dog incident when it passed on her that she peed on herself that's how scared she was that's how scared she was so i could not underestimate 
the fact that that situation happened and it's making her brain do this um and i also cannot underestimate um the fact that there has to be work put in in order for her to heal and to not be as scared and part of the work is me being patient and kind to her um, even when she's exhibiting behavior that I personally don't like because I'm an adult and I'm like why are you talking like that like why are you why are you acting like that I know why she's acting like that it's not a personal attack to me she's not trying to be disrespectful to me she's not trying to be mean to me she's not trying to be rude to me she's just trying to survive through an episode she's just try trying to survive through something that's happening in her brain um, and she does not know what to do with it she does not know how to explain it she just does, doesn't know how to say i'm really scared of dogs instead she's she's doing that through her behavior um and i have to be the wise one that is able to see beneath the surface beneath the behavior but if i make it about the behavior then i miss the message i miss the communication to say she's just telling me that she's not okay she had a really tough day she doesn't have the vocabulary for it and then i try help her build the vocabulary for it when i feel like there's some form of regulation and we are connected enough to be able to have the conversation um yeah that's my story and um i always leave situations like that feeling oh, super exhausted because it's emotionally it's emotionally taxing honestly um uh, to be able to do that because the amount of emotional regulation it takes from my end because yesterday she was testing me man i'd be like you can't do that and she does exactly that she even you know escalates like she started climbing on the bed and doing stuff um like dangerous stuff you know she was being, like, being really physical but when it's when she was doing the really dangerous stuff that i personally don't um don't appreciate like yes i yesterday i didn't appreciate that because i saw she was you know um and i had to be like oh you know when you do dangerous stuff i get really scared so i have to um, um walk away but she was doing stuff that she knows i don't like because she's also trying to get a reaction out of me so it also requires some emotional regulation on my end um to be able to um not give her um what she wants um but actually give her what she needs because what she needed was for me to be able to see her um, and see beyond um, the irritating, frustrating, like annoying behavior that she's um, she's exhibiting. Uh, yeah, I think that's the work of conscious parenting because what it calls um, for me to do is um, to be able to move beyond me, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to look at her behavior and not make it about me to remove the ego out of the situation because we cannot underestimate the fact that God calls us to be kind and to be patient and to be gentle. Um, and we we can't just keep it as biblical. We have to apply it in like real life situations and we have to apply it within a parenting dynamic as well. Um, and yeah, we're grateful. We're grateful for the, for the patients. Um, you know, we're grateful for being able to move past the, the triggering because the, the, there's, a, a, there's a voice in my head in a situation like that that'd be like show this girl who you are she cannot talk to you like that how dare you you know that wants to come out and then i have to move past the ego and be like nah girl nah just because you're the adult just because you're older you don't have to you don't have to do that you don't have to you know show that you're in control because you're actually not in control god is in control so watch yourself watch yourself that's what kids are able to do for us is just kind of kill off the ego um as much as we possibly can that is too long um maybe we could make this a youtube video because that's like ridiculously long okay thank you for listening to this conversation I, I wonder if you can relate to an extent um because that's how i navigated that situation how would you um have navigated a situation like that is there anything that you can kind of um learn and pick up um from my interaction um is there a way that you think i should have you know um navigated a situation um like that yeah i'd like to like you know have conversations with parents about how what we advocate for actually looks like in in practice in like actual real life situations anyway 
I was tired by the end of last night, but we had a peaceful night. Okay, I'm babbling. <laughs> Goodbye.